Well, hello and welcome to Jonathan from the Heart. I'm Jonathan Assley of JonathanAssley.com and I'm so excited to be doing this short video for you today. Our topic, his silence makes him miss you. It's like a puppy dog, he misses you. <laughs> Uh, really quickly, if you're brand new to my YouTube channel, please hit the subscribe button, hit the bell so you can be notified of new videos. And if any time during this video the content resonates with you, please hit that like button so I can be seen in the YouTube algorithms. Also, these are my weekend videos I shoot out on my balcony, very similar to the videos I shoot in my private group called Midlife Love Mastery. This is a group where you can have direct access to me on a regular basis, and if you post questions in the group, I shoot personalized videos just for you. So check out the link in the description to my VIP group. All right, let's talk about how silence makes a man miss you. So, well, let's think about this for a second. I want you to think when a man ignores you. Well, let's say you're in a relationship with someone. You like this person. You enjoy spending time together. You, you communicate on a regular basis. And all of a sudden, he goes silent on you for a variety of reasons. He feels like he's ignoring you. He, he disappears. It feels like he ghosted you. How does that feel when you experience that? Do you miss him? Do you have anxiety? Do you feel frustration? Do you feel anger? What are the feelings that happen when someone goes silent? Well, I can say it can be rather frustrating to go through this experience, and I wanna spend a moment to share why this happens and then how to lean into something that shifts your narrative all the way around. So the thing is, whether it's a man or a woman, most of the time when a person goes silent, it's because there's some sort of chaos going on in their life. It might be their work life. It might be their, their family life. It might be a contentious ex. It might be health issues. The reality today is most people are carrying a lot of weight on their shoulders even when they're in a relationship with someone and they don't feel comfortable sharing that weight with another human being because they haven't developed this yet. And I'm going to talk about that in a second. I want you to think about this. I know for many of you women, you get very attached to a man. In fact, women have a propensity of giving their power away in relationship. And what I mean by giving your power away, the relationship is all predicated on whether how he feels about you. I'm going to repeat that. The relationship is all predicated based on how he feels about you instead of how you also feel about him. And I see this happening frequently in relationship. It's all, in fact, when relationships end, it's always about what he didn't do right and why he didn't do this and why he didn't do this, instead of looking inward as to what might be going on inside of me. And if you're not familiar with my book, and, and why I'm sharing this now is my book is called What the Heck is Self-Love Anyway? What the Heck is Self-Love Anyway? By the way, there's a link below to get my book. Why I'm sharing this with you, it's a book about understanding that no matter what, in life, you have to put the oxygen mask on yourself first. I repeat that, you have to put the oxygen mask on yourself first. Just like when the flight attendant says, if you're traveling with small, or, you know, in the case of cabin pressure change, oxygen masks will drop down. And if you're traveling with small children, put it on yourself first. And I just spit. Because you can't be a benefit to anybody else if you can't take care of yourself. So right from this moment, ladies, I really want to encourage you to recognize that a relationship is a two-lane street. It's a two-lane street of both mutually making effort. In other words, it's not about him making all the effort and you just leaning back in your feminine energy and he'll just naturally claim you no. It's about mutually making effort in the relationship. Now you're probably going, well, Jonathan, what does this have to do about a guy's silence and what does silence make, how do, how do I make him miss you? Jonathan, how do I make this guy miss me? You know, I'm not a big proponent of missing and I'll share about that in a moment, but I am not a big proponent about missing and I'll explain why. But coming back to why do these things happen is because the reality is, is folks, we are dealing with a population of human beings, especially in midlife, that are rather dysfunctional. And if you haven't seen my newest graph, it says emotional maturity, relationship skills. And on this side, you see the word clinical? These, this means that there are a lot of people with clinical issues, whether it's borderline, whether it's uh, bipolar disorder, whether it's narcissism. I mean, there are some really, there are probably 11 different clinical issues out there, and a big percentage of the population has experienced that. By the way, really quickly, this is not fact, this is just my opinion. 
20% of the population is clinical. Then about 60% of the population is dysfunctional when it comes to relationship skills. I repeat that, 60% of the population is probably dysfunctional when it comes to relationship skills. And lastly, probably 20% are rather healthy. So for the healthy guy that's going through that chaos in his life, he actually can lean into the relationship because this one element exists in the relationship and that's what I wanna talk about today, okay? Because, and this is very confusing because if you're in that, if you're in that bracket, you, or if you're in a relationship with a guy who has clinical issues, it's gonna be very difficult to form a relationship with them. And if you're with a man who's very dysfunctional, and by the way, this isn't just for men, this is for women too, okay? If you're with someone who's dysfunctional, it's very difficult to build the foundation to the relationship that can actually build your house if someone is going through dysfunction, okay? And I'm here to say that most human beings are good people. They're just unaware of their issues. They're unaware of their traumas from the perspective of how to actually heal it. And some people are very resistant to it. Men become very stoic. And oftentimes we just go inward instead of expressing ourselves outward. And I gotta tell you, there are men thirsty to want to share, and yet they don't know how, nor do they feel safe. I'm gonna repeat that. There are men thirsty for intimacy, and they don't know how, nor do they, have, do they feel safe. And that's, did you hear the word I said, intimacy? Intimacy, into me you see. If you follow my work, you know I'm a big proponent of ladies, I continually say, Men are not the leaders of the relationship. Women are the leaders of the relationship. Uh, what's that expression? You're the head and I'm the neck kind of thing. I'm, I'm here to say you're actually in a great position to lead the relationship in such a way that bonds the two together in a very strong, healthy way. The problem is you've been so indoctrinated that men are the leaders of the relationship and you've been also so indoctrinated in this belief that the dating process is just about having fun. Let's just have fun, focus on the fun. You can worry about the serious stuff later. The problem with worrying about the serious stuff later is that once you get attached, it's very difficult to detach from someone that you start to have feelings for. So wouldn't it make sense to ask better questions in the dating process to determine if the two of you are on the same page? I'm a big proponent of asking better questions. You can even get on the phone before a first date and ask some really deep, serious questions. In fact, if you're not familiar with the book, Eight Dates by Drs. John and Julie Gottman, they've already laid out the questions you should be asking before you get serious with someone. But Jonathan, everybody tells me it's a numbers game and if I just do this amount of people and the metrics say if I do this, I will naturally fall in love. Folks, relationships is not a numbers game. Dating is not a numbers game. Dating is a prospecting game and it's a pre-qualifying game. I'm gonna repeat that, it's a prospecting and pre-qualifying game. Because the problem is today, and th I'm gonna, what I'm about to share is the silence that I encourage all of you to have going forward, and that is to silence the voice in your head, to silence the expectation, to silence the fairy tale, and to replace it with an understanding of learning how relationships actually work. When you can replace that fantasy, all the movies we've seen and everything else, if we can replace the fantasy of how the dating process should work, replace it with an understanding of the mechanics to a healthy, happy relationship, and also replace it with the understanding that you are in charge of your relationship destiny, not him. You're in charge of your destiny, not him. When you can replace that, you are actually now setting yourself up to be in a relationship. And I'm just about to say, it's not about him missing you. Missing you, like a puppy dog. It's not about him missing you. It's about the following appreciating you, appreciating you. And how does appreciation happen in romantic relationship? It happens through this one element. And that is, look it, I'm gonna talk about this one element in a second, but I want you to just pay attention for me for a second. I know it's rather frustrating, men come on strong. They do the, you know, you've heard the terms love bombing and all this stuff. Here's the thing, 
when guys come on strong, when guys are love bombing, we are driven by our testosterone and our desire to be physically intimate with you. Most men, when they come on way too strong, they're experiencing lust or limerence. I'm gonna repeat that, lust or limerence. Limerence means extreme infatuation. And so as my mom used to say, you gotta take men with a grain of salt. And if you're not familiar with the phrase, men are the gas, women are the brakes. When a guy is coming on strong, that's not an indicator of relationship success. A relationship is built in little bit of stages, in little bit of stages. In fact, it takes about 100 hours of face-to-face -face time just to build level one of trust with another human being. And that's not telephone time, that's face-to-face -face time. It takes about 100 hours of face-to-face -face time to develop that one level of trust, layer one of trust. And I want you to think of trust you know, as a layer. As you build it over time. Oh, I can see my shirt. Don't be a salty bitch. By the way, really quickly, um, those you know know I, I my son passed away a few years ago. My son Connor, his nickname was Salty. So I get all these beautiful messages from all of you folks about Salty and such like that. So I just want to tell you, his nickname is Salty. That's why I wear salty things. <laughs> salty crew, salty life, all this stuff. Okay, I went off on a tangent. Let's bring it back to missing and appreciation. Missing and appreciation. Uh, the best relationships happen when two people appreciate one another. And the best way to create appreciation is through intimacy, through intimacy, both verbal intimacy as well as physical intimacy and the following. And I'm gonna share that in a second, but really quickly, if you're not familiar, there's a book, um, it, this might be out of stock right now, but there's a great book called Oral Sex, Oral Sex, Talking and Listening Your Way to Passionate Intimacy. Folks, it's time to become genuinely intimate with one another from a heart-centered space. And the best way to create intimacy is through friendship, through developing the friendship. That means spending time with social activities, hobbies, mutual interests, spending time with family and friends. This is how you're going to build the friendship component of a relationship. Because if you ask anybody who's been married 30, 40, 50 years and they're happily married, they all say the same thing. I married my best friend. I married my best friend. When I think of my mother and father, you know, one of the things I shared a second ago is social activities, hobbies, mutual interests. And one of the hobbies my parents had was playing backgammon almost every night. I watched them play backgammon growing up and they got into the game and they got so intense with one another, you thought it was World War III. But they looked forward to getting together with them, with the, you know, they looked forward to their backgammon game with each other every night. I witnessed this my entire life. In fact, I shared the following experience with some of you previously. I once dated a woman, this is about half a decade ago, um, and on our second date, she pulls out a deck of cards. She pulls out a deck of cards, and she says, are you into gin rummy? And I wasn't really into it, but we played a game, and then we played another one, and I'm very competitive, and she was very competitive. She was kicking my butt. And, and then we ended up going to a bar for our second date, and we sat at the bar, and we played gin rummy, and then every time we got together, I think we went out six or seven times, we'd play gin rummy together. And when we stopped seeing each other, all I could think about was playing gin rummy with somebody else. I enjoyed the hobby, doing something with somebody. And then during the time you're just beside the competitiveness, you're talking about your feelings, you're talking about your life, you, your guard is down. And what men are thirsty for is for genuine connection and intimacy. Now. The clinical men, they're incapable of it. The dysfunctional men, they desperately need it. They just don't know how. The healthy men are already on the path of making this all happen. So here's my suggestion for you. And this is what's critically important right now, ladies, is to remember you are in charge of your relationship destiny. Don't leave it up to a man. Start to encourage a greater connection with one another by recommending social activities, hobbies, mutual interests. I mean, these days everybody's playing pickleball, at least where I live here in Southern California. So if you start dating someone and you're starting to connect and you're building that 100 hours together, maybe it's going for a walk together. Maybe it's playing pickleball together. Maybe it's playing gin rummy together. Start doing things that connect you 
in a way that makes you feel like you're talking to a friend and learn some, read some of the books that I continually talk about so you're better prepared instead of this whole fantasy way most everybody's dating using, you know, play hard to get, be in your feminine energy. Look, I get it. It's rather confusing. You're hearing contradictory advice. I know from me, you're, I'm a contrarian. I'm intentionally giving you contradictory advice because you know, if, it, if, if all that advice was so great, why isn't everybody happily in relationship? I'm the contrarian. I'm here to suggest turning the tables around and taking charge of your destiny. Because here's the bottom line. The happiest relationships are people that have chemistry, shared value. Oh, if you're not familiar with my relationship iceberg, really quickly, they have, this is the iceberg, attraction, chemistry, but compatibility, shared values, blendable lifestyles and emotional maturity. Those are the people that have the healthiest, happy relationships. This is why it's good to vet these guys early on so you're not investing with the, the clinical or dysfunctional men, you're investing in heart guys who are already emotionally mature. And if you need some support with that, check out the link below uh, to a free discovery call with me to see if working with the coach is right for you. My coffee mug says, I'm unstoppable. This is from a foundation, a uh, charitable foundation uh, gal I went to. I want you to be unstoppable in your life because here's the thing. I know it's very frustrating out there, but ultimately we all desire connection. We all desire to be made it on some level. And my hope is that the content I provide with you, provide for you, shifts your perspective to allow that to enter into your life because I want you to be unstoppable in your relationship and mostly unstoppable in loving on yourself. Will you do that for me? Will you love on yourself? I hope so. All right, silence the voices in your head, the expectation, the fairy tale, and replace it with intentionality and build that friendship and he's not gonna miss you, he's going to appreciate you. Let's hope he will, anyway. All right, I think you get the gist of where I'm going. I'd like to hear your thoughts on this, post a comment below. If you like the shirt, you like the mug, you like the books. If you hate the shirt, hate the mugs, hate the books, that's okay too, you can tell me. Just be nice when you tell me, okay? Just be nice. If you find value in this, please share, please hit the like button, please tell your friends about my channel. All right, I'm gonna wrap up this video as I always do. First off, give myself a big gigantic Jonathan Barrick of self-love. I'm gonna reach into the camera and give you a hug of love if that's okay. I'm gonna ask you to turn to someone, pet, teddy bear or pillow and give it or them a hug of love because hugs are a great source of love and let's face it we could all, we could all use more love in our lives thanks a bunch bye bye now